At a length of 728 feet and a beam of 108 feet, her displacement is 44,800 tons fully loaded. Her impressive speed of 28 knots carried 140 commissioned officers and 2,195 enlisted sailors, including 86 Marines. At the time of her commissioning on April 9th of 1941, she was considered to be the world's greatest sea weapon. Across the Cape Fear River and just adjacent to downtown Wilmington, North Carolina, sits the most decorated U.S. warship of World War II. The purpose of the Kingfisher seaplane was largely observation and rescue, but was also involved in anti-submarine patrols, helping battleships hit their targets in mail runs. This fit well with the mission of the USS North Carolina, which was to support the aircraft carriers attacking land-based targets. During World War II, USS North Carolina participated in every major naval offensive in the Pacific area of operations and during 15 battle stars. The ship's Kingfisher's planes were launched for two main reasons. First, they would be in the way of the 16-inch gun turrets on the aft deck. Secondly, the planes could spot the gunfire, that is, check to be sure that the projectiles were hitting their targets. Armed with nine 16-inch 45 caliber guns in three turrets and 20 5-inch 38 caliber guns in 10 twin mounts. 16-inch guns compromised North Carolina's main battery, which was her most destructive weapons. The guns are housed in three six-level turrets, which extend from the exterior decks all the way down to just above the ship's bottom. The primary targets for these guns were the enemy ships and shore bombardments. Effective range at 45 degrees for the armor-piercing projectiles was 21 miles. Rate of fire between each round was 30 seconds. The actual weight of each armor-piercing projectile was 2,700 pounds, and the weight of the powder, the charge, or the gunpowder was 540 pounds, or six 90-pound bags. Each 16-inch turret was manned by three officers and approximately 177 enlisted men, all working in unison and on six different levels within the turret itself. And if the projectiles missed, the planes would radio back to the ship the information so the corrections could be made with the correct coordinates. During WW2, the V Division aboard the USS North Carolina consisted of two Kingfishers and 23 men. Three officers were pilots and three enlisted men flew with them as radio men and gunners. The remaining 17 enlisted men included specialists in aviation repair, maintenance, and aviation ordnance. They also had their own aviation supply clerk and photographer. Of the 10 men that died on the USS North Carolina, two men, George E. Conlon and Eldon E. Means, came from the V Division. We will pay tribute to all these lost men at the end of our video. Please stay tuned. So the number one question when visitors come aboard the battleship North Carolina is? Whether she was ever damaged by the enemy? And the answer is yes. yes. We're starting out in the galley mess hall and we had a lot of hungry sailors lined up, but the first one served as the officer of the deck. He had to come down, take a look at the food, sample each offering. If it was suitable to him, then the chow line would actually start, but it was already formed, of course, by then. Um, if there was any grievances by that officer of the deck, uh, he had about the looks or the taste, taste of, it. of it. Then the line would be secured until the matters were taken care of. Uh, there were seldom any of these chow lines held up by this. Uh, most of the food was palatable. Uh, as noted, uh, one of the sailors' history plaques, we ate very well mm -hmm. on here. We had a lot of fresh baked goods. They, they'd be baking, baking pies, pies and cakes, cakes, and jelly donuts continuously. We had a lot of ice cream at every meal also. So everybody ate pretty good here. Seconds were sometimes available and sometimes refused, but usually if there was some leftovers, the sailors were allowed to go back for more. And sailor Robert L. Palermis noted, one thing we were always sure of is when we got biscuits or any bread, anything like that, before we ate them, we held them up to light to make sure there weren't any black spots in it. And those black spots were cockroaches. Quite often we would find them in the bread. Sometimes so many of them, we thought they were raisins. A mess cook is a guy who's in his white uniform and he's up in the mess hall and he takes care of the mess tables and makes sure there's coffee on the tables and sugar and whatever is necessary. Everybody has to go through this in their Navy career. It is a minimal of three months of duty. In 1942, everything was spam, spam, spam. Mm. For breakfast, dinner, and supper. Remember, it's supper, not dinner yeah. anymore. And with eggs, back then Nine. they had powdered eggs and a lot of dehydrated spuds. July of 18th, 1942, chow was being rationed uh, to maintain enough for them to stay out to sea for up to two months. So it was just one egg or two pancakes for breakfast. Wow. 
baked beans for dinner, which was lunch. really lunch. Sailors continuously complained and were often losing weight with their scaled down rations. After the North Carolina's WW2 service ended, sailors, however, were always seeing things like, I always thought the chow was fantastic and I enjoyed every bit of it. Some of my favorites were beans for breakfast, beef on toast, eggs, but out at sea they were usually powdered. But sometimes we got fresh ones and that was a real treat. The battleship North Carolina arrived in the Pacific ready to do battle on July 11th, 1942. North Carolina fought her first battle on August 24th of 1942. It was the Battle of the Eastern Solomons. She shot down seven planes and helped shoot down at least seven more. She frustrated the attacks of many other planes. She was torpedoed only two months later on September 15th, 1942. North Carolina was in the aircraft carrier Hornet task group. The two carrier task groups, Hornet and Wasp, were escorting troop transports. North Carolina was one of the ships protecting the Hornet. The two task groups were about 7 to 10 miles apart when a Japanese submarine, I-19, I-19 fired six long-range torpedoes at the carrier Wasp in rapid sequence. Three torpedoes struck their target, causing tremendous damage. The task group commander ordered Wasp to be sunk, sunk that, that night. night. The remaining three torpedoes raced on across several miles into the Hornet task group. One torpedo hit destroyer O'Brien. She broke up on October 19th while returning to San Francisco for repairs. One torpedo ran until out of fuel. A third exploded into North Carolina's port side. It hit just forward of the 12-inch thick armor belt designed to protect her from torpedoes. The enormous blast shook Shook. the ship and the crew and sent geysers of oil and water skyward. Tons Tons of water water. quickly flooded through the enormous 32 by 18-foot torpedo hole. The water caused the ship to list. The crew quickly righted the ship by intentionally flooding compartments on the opposite side. Five men were killed and 23 were wounded. In the Battle of the Eastern Solomons in August of 1942, the battleship's anti-aircraft barrage helped save the aircraft carrier Enterprise. Therefore establishing the primary role of the fast battleship protector of aircraft carriers. One of the battleship North Carolina's Kingfisher pilots, the small scout seaplane that we showed you earlier in this video, performed heroically during a strike on Turk. When she, that's T R U K, by the way, when she rescued 10 downed Navy aviators on April 30th, 1944. In awe, USS North Carolina carried out nine shore bombardments, sank an enemy troop ship, destroyed at least 24 enemy aircraft, and assisted in shooting down many more enemy targets. Her anti aircraft guns helped halt or frustrate scores of attacks on our U.S. aircraft carriers. She trekked over 300,000 nautical miles during her WW2 naval career. Although Japanese radio announcements claimed six times that the North Carolina had been sunk, she survived all those claims, but with many close calls. Okay, we're going to take a little time out from all that information. We've been over probably overloading you a little bit. Mm-hmm. And uh, one of the things we do is we get information like uh, these brochures and stuff. Oh. And there's not a lot of information inside of these but there is a lot of guide information so you can get around the ship and one thing that we didn't do that i really want to do is get up on the helm or the bridge and that's where they steer the boat um it was pouring rain we got wet and cold and it was cold so we decided to leave right now you can kind of see we're showing some of the officer quarters um we kind of been cramming this video in a little bit yeah where we've been talking and trying to give you two things at once showing you something and Telling them about something different. And the reason being is because I try to keep this video close to 10 minutes as possible so you wouldn't get so bored. We know we got a lot of ADD friends and probably including ourselves. <laughs> no one wants to see a half an hour video on this, but there's tons of information here. We really recommend you guys go here and check it out if you're interested in history at anything yes. at all. Yes. Um, look, you can see small children too. Um, just make sure they can go up and down um, the flights of the stairs and stuff. And they are steep. And steep there are so. some sharp metal things right. around here. Mm-hmm. Both Debbie and myself, our fathers were in World War, World II, War II in the Army, though. But this this kind of stuff just like wows us. We I kinda, love history. Okay, if you can see right now, we're looking at the weight of the anchor, 25,883 pounds. It's more than our RV at 21,000 pounds, which is almost 45 feet long. So that anchor is something. I tried to lift up one of those mm. links. I did. But <laughs> I'll tell you what.
what? Took all my might, and I'm six four, yeah, well, two hundred forty pounds. Yeah, how many it takes to do NFL that. linebacker size, and I can hardly lift up one of those links. That's mm-hmm. how big. That's how big and heavy that Amazing. anchor is. Okay, mm-hmm. let's get back to some technical information and finish this video off. We won't bore you too much. Just a couple more minutes. After World War II, the battleship North Carolina served as a training vessel for midshipmen and then was decommissioned on June 27th of 1947 and placed in the inactive reserve fleet in Bayonne, New Jersey for the next 14 years. In 1958, the announcement of their impending scrapping led to a statewide campaign by citizens of North Carolina to save the ship from scrappers, tortures, and bring her back back home home to the state of North Carolina. The SOS, or Save Our Our Ship, Ship. campaign was successful and the battleship arrived in her current berth on October 2nd of 1961. She was dedicated on April 29th, 1962 as a state's memorial to its World War II veterans and the 11,000 North Carolinians who died during the war. I mean, it was fun and we have this memory, so I suggest you do it.